Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. My name is Gabby. Uh, last week I uh, put up a video about how to build a flagship streamer uh, using uh, mostly in Canada's uh, parts. This week we're gonna add a little bit to it and make it a little bit better and uh, yet keep it still as simple as possible for DIY. We are going this time to add some big ultra capacitors on the uh, FIFO Pi to and the clocks to keep that part of the uh, board running on the best power supply possible. And also we are going to replace the clocks with uh, some uh, either an AccuSilicon clocks or some uh, Crystec clocks. Uh, the AccuSilicon clocks will be easier because they're basically drop in. The uh, Christec one, you'll have to do a bit more tedious soldering, but I will put a little hack toward the end of the video on how to make things a little bit easier for yourself, uh, or you could find a friend to do that for you. The AcroSilicon and the uh, Christec uh, 975 clocks are not the only clocks. There's so many other clocks you can get uh, actually, Ian is in the process of uh, releasing soon his own uh, SC Pure uh, clock, which is supposed to be really, really good. And he's also comparing uh, a whole bunch of clocks, I've got over eight of them, and he's going to compare the sound and also the phase noise and lots of different characteristics. So I would uh, keep close attention to that, and I think. Uh, his uh, SC Pure clock looks really, really promising. It's actually a drop-in clock, so you just have to drop it right into place. So something exciting to, to look for. And that's uh, the, the fun of DIY is you can actually try so many different things. Uh, for those of you who are really advanced, I have a couple of videos where I built my uh, streamer a while back. Also recently up with a very uh, a video of five parts, really long detailed one on how to build my Gapster D11 DAC. So uh, you can refer to those if you really want to build something super, super advanced. Uh, but what we're doing here is already quite advanced and these are using quite uh, high-end components. So this is, uh, this is not a slouch, so don't underestimate uh, the streamer. And there's always room to do some upgrades in the future by adding, say, a DAC to it or other things and uh, make it a little bit more, more versatile. Uh, please feel free to uh, share those videos on the forums and social media will help me uh, help the channel grow bigger. If you haven't subscribed and liked the channel, feel free to subscribe and like the videos and so on. Uh, having said that, so uh, let's dive in and see how we're going to make uh, this uh, streamer a little bit better. Before I carry on with the upgrade, I got a lot of questions like my deck doesn't take I2S and I don't have I2S. You don't have to worry if you don't have I2S. Uh, don't use the HDMI Pro board. Instead, you're going to use what we call the Transport Pi AES. And this one has all your traditional outputs you get and you can use that board instead. They're about the same price pretty much. But uh, I would not use both. I think you, you can use, but if you don't have to, don't then introduce more, uh, more noise. So what do we need for this upgrade? Uh, the first thing is a UC conditioner, 3.3 uh, volt, and a pair of uh, Maxwell ultra capacitors. So these will fit onto this board. What it will do is provide even a smoother uh, power supply for the FIFO Pi Q7 and the clock part of it as well. And uh, getting the best power for the clocks is your ultimate goal here. And you also are going to need a pair of either Aku silicon clocks or a Christec CCHD957. I'm only showing one here, but you need a pair of them. A uh, pair means uh, one should be in the 45 uh, 
megahertz family and one into the uh, 49 or a uh, multiple of that for example my acrosilicons here one is a 90.3168 and one is a 98.3040 uh, put a link about all these so basically one or the other I prefer the Christac one but they're a little bit hard to solder on the PC board because if you pick the Christac ones you'll have to buy a special adapter you have to be good at soldering remember we're doing this as a as a simple version of things so I would probably rule this out unless you're really good at soldering and you may want to pick up a uh, an adapter kit for those so you can actually solder the clocks onto this kit so you can adapt it to the socket but uh, be uh, careful these are very hard to solder it requires very excellent dexterity and it's not for the first uh, not for your first soldering job and you may also want to try Ian's uh, SC pure clocks that are coming soon and they're supposed to be really good so conclusion we need a UC conditioner 3.3 volts a pair of uh, ultra capacitor and a pair of clocks please do your own homework i'm just showing you what i do but i would like you guys to observe safety standards and make sure you know what you're dealing with here there's some ultra capacitors some batteries and things can uh, if you're not careful you can have accidents and uh, cause harm to yourself or to your property so the ultra capacitor uh, snap into place with the holes uh, the very very important is to make sure the polarity is probably observed so we got the plus here and the plus here so you gotta line them up and put them in and now you're gonna flip it upside down so they don't move and rattle and now you're gonna solder all those four make sure you get the polarity right once you solder these um, it's almost impossible to get them out so we're gonna get the soldering iron we're gonna get this thing really hot first so it takes a lot of time to get this this is a big big pin to solder this is the first time you're soldering I would practice on something a little bit easier there you go starting to starting to take now there you go so I've got two of them in I'm gonna do the rest of them off camera so I finished soldering them up the only thing you have to watch is make sure you don't short things so when you make sure your soldering is clean that you're not connecting anything to uh, something else uh, you don't want to connect the plus to the negative or anything like that so once you have assembled the uh, ultra capacitors here we're going to take the cover off unscrew the four screws take the cover off and uh, this is when you can pull the clocks out if you're not very comfortable you could use a pair of tweezers and, and just pull them out and we're going to put in the aqua silicone clock in there and uh, the most important part is the clocks have a little dot here and that dot refers to pin one and if you look on the uh, board as well you should see a dot as well so make sure that the dot lines up with the dot if you are using the q7 um, it's you have to uh, cancel pin one so what you do you bend pin one i bent it i usually put a little piece of tape on top of it just to avoid any connection whatsoever we're going to put it in there just like that and it's in and you're gonna put the other clock the second clock as well in there next thing you're gonna do you're not gonna take your uh, UC conditioner remember this is a 3.3 volt version and you are going to put it on top and uh, we're gonna put a couple screws not the big screws that came with the plastic cover you can get smaller screws put on and or if not you could put a couple standoffs as well to lock it in place so just just like that the reason you don't want to use the big screws is you could short some things because they're quite large and they're not made for that so we can get some smaller screws for that you can get those off in too i'm sure we can send you a few so next thing what you want to do you want to disconnect the cord the power cable from the you see pure on the bottom you can leave it attached to the FIFO pipe and we are going to get another one 
Here we go. So we got here. So these are this is the battery output of the UC Pure. It comes out from here. It goes into the input of the, uh, the UC conditioner and comes out here. And it comes out from the output here back into the FIFO Pi Q7 input. So this kind of gives the FIFO Pi a little better power supply. All right. So the first time you power it on with the uh, UC conditioner, uh, it takes a bit of time for the ultra capacitors to charge. So it goes through, there's a few LED lights here, one to say the power on, this orange one says that the power is good, then it will go into a conditioning stage and then it will say that it's full. And if it's over voltage, there's also an LED that tells you it's over voltage. Uh, please read the PDF document about these, it'll explain to you all the functions of the UC conditioner. That also, there's another big question here is how does it sound after all this? All right, so we spent $700 buying all these parts. Is it gonna sound better than a streamer that I'll buy for a similar price? And uh, I think it's up to you to make that decision. As far as I'm concerned, I can see a big difference, uh, but that's me. And there's also a lot of people out there that have been using those products and they really like the results but like I said it's results can vary depend on your DAC and how you implement it into your DAC whether you're upsampling or not is your DAC reclocking the signal there's so many different parameters so it's hard to say it's if you get this and build it it's going to sound a lot better or a lot worse or whatever it is it's it's all depends on your DAC uh, I am using a Denafrips Terminator, uh, it's in a non-oversampling mode and uh, there have been lots of others using some of the uh, Holospring DACs, but these are all R2R DACs, um, also using uh, Sigma Delta DAC as well. In my D11 uh, DAC uses a non t 38 Sigma Delta, but in a very clean, pure way and uh, you definitely can hear the difference between clocks. Uh, so it's, it's all up to your system and what are you using and uh, whether it's your system is remodulating, you know, reclocking the signal or not. So uh, keep all this in mind, and, uh, but uh, feel free to experiment. And, and this is like a, a really cool way to really explore for yourself and, 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 and try different things and see a different world out there. Most DACs and streamers that you pay thousands of dollars for have very actually cheap clocks in them or somewhat semi-decent but nothing really exceptional. And uh, when you research about different clocks, uh, there's a whole world of different uh, clocks out there. And the, those uh, crystal clocks are really, really important for the sound quality. If any component that is the most critical, it is those clocks. But you also have to be careful that uh, this, you may not hear much of the difference if you're sending this clock to your DAC and your DAC is reclocking it all over again in a cheaper clock and a more jittery clock. So, uh, that's something to keep an eye on. on. Just make sure when you send it to your DAC that you're not doing anything uh, that's required upsampling or any sorts of reconstructing the signal. I will put a link below about uh, Ian's uh, uh, testing different phase noise on a whole variety of clocks and his results and how they compare to each other. And uh, it's just for fun and uh, just for information. Uh, take it for a grain of salt, but uh, there's lots of different published uh, things about uh, phase noise on different clocks, which can affect the sound quality, but it is not everything. After all, we have to listen to those clocks ourselves and decide. There will be a couple more videos on this series and the future videos we're gonna spend some time making the aesthetics of the uh, the uh, the streamer a little bit better maybe try put it in some nice uh, case or some funky things and just have some fun with it maybe do some minor tweaks and change a few things and make it a tiny better as well and uh, possibly maybe adding a DAC to it, making it a full system, uh, maybe a monitor and, and, and things like that. So, but uh, the core system we're going to be focused on today, and this is where most of the sound quality is going to be coming from. 
As for power supply, I would still stick to the IFA, even though it's a switching power supply, but it's a really good one. It's rated at one microvolt and I've tested it once and it's really good. Uh, you can go linear, but prepare yourself to spend a good two to three hundred dollars on a linear power supply and you're not going to get a lot of benefits because remember, we are actually using most of the powers coming from the batteries that are charging and also the ultra capacitors on top so uh, the benefits are going to be very minimal i will put a link of this one below so you know which one i'm talking about i hope you enjoyed uh, this series of videos and uh, feel free to uh, check out some of my other videos i'll put a link up here about my uh, my speakers that i've designed from scratch to the gs11 and i'll put a link here about the d11 dac that's also designed from scratch Take care and hope to see you again.